Hey guys, welcome back. As I was looking through my stash of CPUs, I came across this little guy. This is an AMD Athlon 2650E. That's a single core 1.6 gigahertz CPU uh, with a TDP of 15 watts. So I thought, why don't I throw this in this little system here and uh, you know, let's see what, what this thing can actually do or not do. And uh, also I wanted to overclock and see how far we could push it. And it was actually quite surprising. All right, so if we look at the specs for the CPU, uh, you can see this is a 64-bit um, uh, Athlon that launched in at the end of 2008 for socket AM2. Uh, 1.6 gigahertz is a frequency with a lock multiplier of 8 and a 15-watt TDP. So this should be pretty interesting. All right, so we're now booting up with the 2650E in its stock configuration. And just for the record, this PC is running Windows Vista Ultimate 64-bit on a 256-gigabyte SSD. And in CPU-Z, you can see this CPU runs at just over 1 volt V-Core, so it's a very low-power CPU. And I need to get some baselines in the stock configuration here, so I might as well start with Cinebench R15. And it's going to take a while, so I think skipping to the end seems like a great option here. Alright, well, coffee and a sandwich later. This run is done with a score of 31. And if we look at the bottom of the list, it's definitely the, C the slowest of the CPUs that I've tested so far, along with the 1.8 gigahertz Sempron uh, 1300 LE. All right, so while we run Unigen Tropics, I'll tell you about the rest of the system. The motherboard is a Gigabyte GAMA78GM-S2H, as if the name couldn't have been longer. Uh, the GPU is a Radeon HD 3870X2, and we have 8 gigabytes of DDR2-800 installed. The CPU is going to be the bottleneck no matter what, so uh, we should really be able to see what improvement overclock can give us. So we'll just skip to the end here, and uh, we can see an average FPS of 21.7. Next up is Fear, uh, the original Fear, and I'm just going to run the in-game benchmark here. And as you saw, that was pretty bad. I mean, average is uh, 36 FPS, but 40% of the time, the FPS was below 25. I also realized I forgot to show CPU usage. Although you can guess what it showed, I enabled it here quick. Unfortunately, uh, there's no CPU temperature option available. And of course, we have to try Crisis as well. And uh, this is one of the more demanding scenes that really uh, hits a CPU hard in this game.
and this poor little Athlon just couldn't handle it at all. But uh, we'll overclock and help it. Well, we're going to find out soon enough. Alright guys, now for the fun part. Here in the BIOS, I'm locking the multiplier, bumping the V-core to 1.35, and I start raising front side bus, and uh, occasionally you'll see me lower the RAM and the HT-Link frequencies just to keep them in spec, and uh, rebooting to make sure that it posts. Alright, so eventually I get it to 2.86 gigahertz with 1.4 volts V-Core in a BIOS and a bus speed of 357. HT-Link and RAM frequencies were good, so uh, I went for a Cinebench run. With the overclock, our score went from 31 to 54, so that's a pretty significant increase. And then, once again, running Unigen Tropics, you can tell there was a definite improvement but unfortunately the system wasn't stable and it kept crashing so a tweak needed to be made.
I do wish the voltage control in the BIOS was a bit more granular, but it is what it is, so we'll just work with what we got. But with fear, you can clearly see the difference, although the CPU definitely doesn't like a lot going on at one time. Uh, we ended up with an average FPS of 59 compared to 36 at stock, and only 9% of the FPS was below 25, and 61% of it was above 40. So, yeah, you could play fear with the CPU if you massively overclocked it. Alright, Crisis. Yeah, it's still terrible and still not playable at all. And uh, as you'll see, it's not just these demanding scenes. I'm going to go back to a much easier scene on the CPU here in a minute. I see a large transmitting array. That must be the jamming station. I kid it for fun! Uh, we might as well test out Far Cry as well. Uh, it seems like it'll be okay when you're playing it, then all of a sudden there's some noticeable input lag. And, uh, you know, even locking up for a second out of nowhere. So, yeah, I mean, even overclocked, it's probably not a good CPU for Far Cry. Considering Far Cry came out four years before the CPU. Half-Life 2 did okay, so uh, take that for what it's worth. I mean, it still wasn't great. Uh, there was a wildly fluctuating frame rate and occasional stutters, but I would say for the most part it was playable.
and obviously no one's going to play any games with the CPU, but um, it was a damn good overclocker, and we gained 1200 megahertz or 1.2 gigahertz over the stock uh, uh, 1.6. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Even with such a huge overclock, though, it still sucked trying to play games older than the CPU itself. But you know what? Honestly, it was fun to try nonetheless. And I uh, hope you guys found this interesting. And as always, we will see you guys on the next one.